Hello everybody and welcome to a new Nyx video. Today we're going to be having a look at the upcoming ARPGs coming out in 2024 and beyond. It's shaping up to be an incredible year for ARPGs, I think, and I'm here to dive into the mix with you guys. I've compiled this list of action RPGs releasing this year and I aimed for completeness. Yet yeah, I'm only human and I might miss a few, so if you notice any, drop a comment below. When I was working on this list, I was thinking, what defines an ARPG? PG, and I was thinking loot, action, role-playing, obviously, but I tried to stay away from one thing, the roguelite genre. Games like Hades otherwise would be making it into this list with Hades 2 and stuff like that, so no. I'm trying to focus more on the loot aspect, but I did bend that rule a bit, as you'll see in this video. Alongside the list, I'll share, of course, my personal takes, why I'm excited about them, and my insights. Now, let's just start off with a few honorary mentions for games that have already released. First on our list is Tales of Spark, a hack and slash action RPG that comes to us from a Chinese developer called Ice and Fire Studio. The game carries its Chinese origins clearly with uh, lots of references to that culture, not only in its visual art style, but also in its story. The graphics work well, and they do remind me a lot of Diablo 3, albeit with even brighter colors, if you can believe it. In the game, you complete side quests, main quests, while navigating through all the different Eastern locations. It's voice acted, there's a full campaign, and this is the first game that the devs are releasing. It's currently out in early access for about $15, which I think is a fair price for a game that currently sits at very positive on Steam. You can also try this one out for free as there is a demo available on their Steam page, and the devs seem to have a clear plan in mind for this game as they have released a roadmap on their Steam page, which bodes well for its future. I'll be keeping an eye on this one. Moving on, unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably already heard of Last Epoch. It all started back in 2019, where a small team of devs crowdfunding their dream ARPG through a very successful Kickstarter campaign, which raised over 250k dollars. This Kickstarter was closely followed by an early access release, which left a lot of ARPG fans excited for the full release of this game. And as of writing this script, the full release has launched, and what a release it has been. In a nutshell, Last Epoch is an ARPG that offers five base classes that can be specialized into three masteries each, bringing the total number of classes to 15, each with their unique playstyle and approach. What I found interesting about Last Epoch is the way abilities work and how you can specialize in certain abilities as they each have in-depth skill trees to play around with, which can make you believe that the game is quite complex, but in truth is very approachable for casual gamers. Where I wouldn't advise you to jump into Path of Exile without following a guide, I can quite confidently say that Last Epoch is more forgiving and you can absolutely jump in it for yourself without following any specific guides. Not to mention that some of the biggest quality of life features you can find in Path of Exile are built into Last Epoch, such as an in-depth loot filter. Another point I want to make is that although the lore of most ARPGs takes a backseat, Last Epoch plays around with the concept of time travel, which got me super excited while I played the game. Unfortunately, they haven't released 1.0 with a complete campaign. It didn't make the list of musts for their big release, but hopefully they'll be able to complete it soon. As I've mentioned in my other Last Epoch video, this game is very clearly the middle ground between the somewhat casual Diablo games and the behemoth that is Path of Exile. It strikes a really good balance that will surely be inviting for the huge Diablo audience while also offering something refreshing to the more veteran community or hardcore community of Path of Exile. The game is out now and you can buy it for about $40. Okay, for this next one, I'm going to give you some keywords and I want you to try and imagine the game. Hack and slash, ARPG, roguelike, cyberpunk, and vehicles. Yeah, that's right. There's cars in this game. If you have had a hard time imagining cars in all those elements, I can't blame you because Champion Shift is truly an interesting package. This game is by an indie developer called SRG Studios and it nearly didn't make the list because it's a roguelike, but it's so interesting that I had to include it. You play as one of these characters and you battle your way through enemy encounters and you slowly build up your character with unique abilities and upgrades. Not to mention, you get to transform into a car. That's the spicy bit. It's solo and online co-op with up to four players. And if you aren't convinced, there is a demo available as well as a story prologue that currently sits at very positive on Steam. Not bad. Now let's start talking about upcoming games that are due to be playable in 2024. And we'll start with the biggest one, Path of Exile 2. It's the direct 
sequel to Path of Exile by Grinding Gear Games, the good folk over in New Zealand. And this one originally started as an expansion to Path of Exile, but grew many legs and feet until it turned into a fully fledged game. Some new features include a dodge roll, new mechanics and brand new campaign through six acts, 600 new monsters and over 100 new bosses somehow. What's interesting here is that GGG Grinding Gear Games have said that Path of Exile 2 will be supported alongside Path of Exile 1. One doesn't replace the other, which I find extremely surprising. How are they going to be able to maintain both games considering the amount of care and work they put into the first one? They will have their own balance, end game, and even leaks, which is incredible. Path of Exile has established itself as, in my opinion, the most complete ARPG out there. If you can take on board the brutal learning curve, you're in for a good time. Now with Path of Exile 2, I am hoping that Grinding Gears games open themselves up to working on a better onboarding experience while retaining what made them so special in the first place, the vastness of their content. Giving this amazing track record of the company, I have full confidence that they will deliver something special. The closed beta is set for June 7th, 2024. And by the way, the game will be free to play, of course. <laughs> I really can't wait for this one. Moving straight along, when I was doing my research for the release schedule for 2024, a Grim Dawn expansion was not on my bingo list. Yet, here it is. This is the third expansion for Grim Dawn. And as a reminder, Grim Dawn is an ARPG I covered on this channel and loved. The original game released back in 2016 by Crate Entertainment, which is four years after Diablo 3 released, to give you some perspective. It's built in the same engine as Titan. Titan Quest and features many in-depth mechanics that set it apart from its competition, I think. The game has some complex character builds and many items to play around with. I played this myself and I know that there is a core community there that loves this game. I really enjoyed my time with it and I might jump into this DLC if I can. This expansion brings us a Vikings vibe and snow covered peaks. We're going to venture into a region called Aster Karn. One of the biggest new features on display here is the opportunity for players to customize their their potions. We will have to see how that changes the gameplay though. This will be a fully priced DLC and you will need to own the two previous DLCs to play this one, so keep that in mind if you want to pick this up. This DLC is set to release somewhere in 2024, probably around Q3 or Q4, as they haven't released any trailers for the DLC yet. Currently Grim Dawn sits at an overwhelmingly positive on Steam, which is an indication of what you might be missing if you haven't tried the game for yourself. Go check it out. Ooh. Ooh, the most contentious one comes next. With a fantastic campaign, but an endgame that left me wanting more, you've already guessed it, it's time to talk about Diablo 4 and its new expansion set to release this fall, Vessel of Hatred. This is a fully fledged paid expansion on top of the fully priced Diablo 4 title, so it has big boots to fill. As I mentioned, the Diablo 4 campaign was a great experience for me, but the itemization and lack of endgame content was a bummer for many. By the way, spoilers for the story. The big takeaway from this expansion for me is that the story takes place right where Diablo 4 left off. Nirel has Mephisto's shard and is running around Sanctuary looking for a way to expunge the malice in the vessel, but of course causing havoc as it slowly infects her mind and the people around it. Make sure to check out my deep dive into the Book of Lorath on this channel as I explain in there what happened after Diablo 4 and where Nirel ended up going. That video really took a toll on me just by the amount of editing that went into it. Now, take the following with a grain of salt, but we have heard rumors through various leaks that the DLC will bring with it a fully playable new class called the Spiritborn. With the jungle vibes of the trailer, it would make sense to have a new nature-based class. On top of this, the leaks revealed that the DLC will feature the very first raid in Diablo 4 called the Tomb of Akarat and a new system to hire mercenaries, just like Diablo 3. Will this DLC be enough to bring back some of the players that have left since the release? Only time will tell. In my opinion, we will have a clearer image of what's to come earlier than we expect, as Season 4 of Diablo is supposed to bring with it fixes to the itemization that might fix some things, right? I really hope so anyway. With the release of Last Epoch and Path of Exile 2, where will Diablo 4 fit? In any case, I'll be picking this up just for the story. I'll also make a bold prediction here, but I believe Diablo 4 will go free to play by the time the DLC launches. When I look at how the game is doing right now, it would make sense for it to go free to play, and it might also make 
even more sense considering the price of the microtransactions. Anyway, will you be picking this DLC up? Let me know in the comments. Now it's time for me to talk to you guys about some games that don't have any release dates yet, but look unique and interesting. I have fetched these games from the deep, darkest depth of the internet, and we're gonna start with Heroes of the Ashen Watch. Now this is a game you probably don't have on your radar. It's an ARPG developed by an American indie dev called Pyro Games. It features five different classes to play from and has a somewhat unique twist where you can switch between all five on the go. It also features online co-op so you can get all your mates involved. There's only a few available snippets of gameplay out there, unfortunately, from what I can see, but it reminds me a lot of Torchlight too. I hope the devs are able to deliver something unique and fun that blows our socks off. No release date yet, but I wish this team all the luck in the world. Now this next one piqued my interest. It's called Aaron, the Book of Heroes. Similar to Ashen Watch, you play as one of five characters that each have their unique weapons and abilities. This one is heavily geared towards co-op, as you can bring in up to four friends to play as a team. I guess what pulled me in here is the very clear Viking aesthetic, not to mention the soundtrack that the good folk at Palsor Studios have decided to bring to life with their game. You'll navigate through multiple missions and quests, earning loot, perks, and gold. And maybe it's because I've just watched The Northman, but I'm eager to get my teeth stuck into this one. The great thing about this one is that it's got a demo available right now to get a feel for the game. There's no release date available yet, but I'll be checking this one on release. Now this one stuck out to me. It's a game called The Bloody Doctor, and it's developed by an indie team called Melancholie Diabolique. This small team of two devs have got something special on their hands, as they brought a very dark atmosphere to their game that reminds me of Bloodborne, and I believe these guys must be huge fans of that game when you look at the trailers. You play as a doctor facing a harsh epidemic with the sole goal of harvesting organs. It's a single player narrative adventure that is sure to bring something new to the genre. For example, as your goal is to recover organs in the best state possible, you are going to have to think twice about how to approach confrontations in order not to damage the organs. Well, that's what the Steam page tells us anyway. Let's see when this releases. There's no release date currently, but I'll be keeping my eyes on this one. I want us now to turn our attention towards a game that I think will make big waves in the genre. The talented team at Moon Studios are well known for their work on the Ori games. And if the level of polish and quality for those games is anything to go by, this new game will be sure to make its place in the genre. I'm talking about No Rest for the Wicked, a solo and online co-op ARP PG with some really good visuals and a seemingly interesting narrative. From the trailers, there also seems to be a pinch of horror, which I'm very excited about. Similarly to the Ori games, we should expect a narrative adventure which takes us to all different kinds of places, with vibrant colors, I'm guessing, but also dark tones. An interesting piece of information I caught from the Steam page was that the co-op seems to be quite open. Up to two friends can join you in your campaign, but they don't have to follow you in each mission. They can venture around the world and discover things for themselves, and I wonder how that will work in terms of character progression, you know what I mean? Now looking at the gameplay trailer, I'm expecting a more visceral and precise approach to combat, something similar to a Dark Souls rather than a Diablo for example. Nevertheless, it looks absolutely gorgeous, and I can't wait to try it out when it eventually releases. No release date yet though. Last but not least, we have the follow-up to one of the most famous ARPGs of all time. I'm talking of course about Titan Quest 2. Two, and I'm so, so happy to have it on this list. Titan Quest 2 will be developed by Grim Lore Games, and it takes us back to the Greek-inspired world that some of you might know very well. From what the devs have shared with us, the game will feature flexible character system progression and will allow us to create our own class by merging two masteries. They've also mentioned on their Steam page that they're going to bring endless waves of loot with meaningful stats. I'm looking at you, Diablo 4. And of course, a revamped combat system. This is definitely a game on my most anticipated list, but can can it stand up to the original? Those are some big boots to fill. There will be a new Greek myth inspired campaign and many factions to discover and ally with. I can't wait to get my hands on this one to be fair, although there's no release date set so far, but I'll be sure to cover it when it releases. So to wrap this thing up, the landscape of the ARPG genre is quite vast and not so black and white. We have our traditional games like Path of Exile, Titan Quest, but we also have some interesting new takes on the genre thanks to roguelikes, I have to say, and that genre is becoming a huge thing. Now, of course, with everything video games development related, you need to remind yourself that many games get pushed back and in my opinion, it's not a bad thing. Like a great man once said, let them cook. Just let them cook. Let him cook.
Regardless of all that, I want us to take into consideration that many, many indie devs are working on new upcoming ARPGs, and I hope we can lend them all our support and feedback as they work really hard on these games. The industry has suffered a lot when it comes to people's career, so we should support the people who make it their goal to bring us the best games they possibly can. In the meantime, I'm playing a bunch of Last Epoch, and let me tell you, it's fantastic. All the links to support me are in the description, join the Discord, come hang out, and we'll see you in the next one.